Hey everyone, welcome back. Today is the day I'm going to finally walk you through my first completed sketchbook. So this is the Stillman and Vern sketchbook. You probably can hardly see that, but I talked about this earlier on Patreon. I use it pretty much for not just sketching, but also more of my Patreon art. So for you guys, and this size is kind of new and it's kind of big, but I think it was perfect for me because it gave me room to really make larger drawings and to add a lot of detail. I would definitely get this again, but right now I am enjoying my new sketchbook and I think I spoiled myself to where I am second guessing this one, but that's beyond the point right now. Let's just get into it. So to start off, I did kind of stick in some of my artwork that I need to put over there. Um, I have been doodling in other things. I do have like a palette, one of those palette papers, and I really like the colors, and I thought I would just stick it in here. So I have just a bunch of random stuff. I did start this on January 17th of this year. You may recognize this page. I think I showed it before, but um, this was when I was doing a lot of the plant artwork for March. So I think this was available in February. I absolutely love this one, <laughs> this sketch. This was another watercolor artwork that I did earlier, what, a couple weeks ago? So for July, and I kind of just tucked that in here. And the reason I have these is because I have other watercolor paper that I feel works better a little bit than this one. Plus sometimes I didn't want to just open up this book. I wanted a like a paper that was easy to turn on my on my desk and so that's why I have these separated. And then I try not to use like a whole piece of paper of watercolor paper and I think this is the Strathmore like 300 series of watercolor paper and um, I would do different images on a full nine by 12 sheet, and then I would just cut them out. Now behind these two images here are some artwork that I really did not care about. Um, so I just covered them up. I was thinking about doing the theme of the balloons, but because I felt like my balloon drawings were really super blah, that I was like, I need to change it. We need to do something different. So I was just trying to sketch it out, but I didn't really like it and I just moved on from there. I do think I will be coming back to drawing images like this, but as for now, I am going to stay away. I move on. You might recognize this sheet. So this is when I was doing the crystals and this is a printable. And I have noticed that I would only work on one side of the paper, although both sides of the paper work well with watercolor in this notebook. Another one of my artwork pieces, I'm testing out some new watercolor, and these are the Daniel Smith watercolors. And this is also part, I think, of March Printables artwork, where I was actually using ballpoint because it's permanent. Well, it doesn't, it's water resistant when you paint over it. So that's why my artwork with my, um, looking for it, my washi tape. So that's why my washi tape so that's why my washi tape has blue on it because of uh, using ballpoint. But I thought it was, I guess you could say like it was easier to copy, like scan it in and then put it on the template that I needed to create my washi tape. Not everything is 100% filled in in this sketchbook and I kind of 
understand why now like when I would watch sketchbook videos I'd always wonder like why you know there's some blank pages or why some of the pages um, only had one image and then the rest was blank and how they considered that a completed notebook but you know it's up to you what you want to do and for me when I would draw on something and I wanted to start a new sketch or a new piece of artwork I wanted a fresh page and that's just something I've learned that that's how I work. So you may recognize these two images. This was the greenhouse, which is the greenhouse sticker. And then, um, let me, I still have some extra greenhouse stickers, I believe in my shop. And then these were the pieces of the washi tape, which is, this washi tape that I did. So this is that room and the other rooms. And I I do realize that there was one piece I'm missing here. And uh, when I did the washi tape is that this became a different color background than I wanted. So one of the things I was a little bit disappointed in is that with this image the background was a different color than I wanted it to and so it just came out where you could hardly see this image here and it should have been dark so you can really see this plant pop out but it was minor I mean everything else looked really good on the washi tape so that was one of the things I need to watch out for is like finding things that should pop out and really be more thoughtful of the color choices. So still practicing the plants and the flowers. I was going to do something with this image here, but it ended up not working out like I wanted it to. Plus the, the pencil I was using was starting to smear onto the side of the page. So I knew I would have a lot of other editing. And so I felt like, ah, uh, I'll let this go. Plus also the background here was off. It should have been more at a diagonal than straight. more just random doodles trying to draw my son here and not any like none of these images actually look like him also I think my son was painting in my notebook as well and then here's some of my bigger sketches that you may recognize so I love this one I should be coloring it in but I may save that for another day and then the bicycle. And then you may recognize this page. And, oh, I dated it. So this was in February when I created this one. And I kept them, I didn't color them in because I wanted to copy these images and put them into my um, iPad so that I can color them in digitally. But now that I'm getting better at watercolor, I, you may see less black and white images and more actual colored in images. And then the butterfly theme. This was the first bicycle I drew, and then I drew the larger image of the bicycle. This was me trying to watercolor directly on the page without doing any outlines. And you could see how far I've come because I will compare some of my plants and uh, my plant art to what I've done now and I think there's a huge improvement especially in my leaves and then you saw this video and then I love this one um, actually what I've done with this image is taking it and I put it on one of my uh, debit cards 
uh, with uh, Wells Fargo, they you can put an image on your card. And I think you have to have like the rights to the image or something like that. But uh, I was able to pull this image and put it on my debit card. I would show you, but it's my debit card and it's kind of hard to hide the numbers. <laughs> so, um, but the numbers kind of go over it, but this is like the image on my debit card. And I thought that was really cool that they offered that. So this was the watercolor uh, phrase I use for the month of July artwork. And then this is the butterfly that I did in gouache. I just love how it just pops and stands out. And then you can't see it, it's kind of hidden because of the camera, but actually within each part of the butterfly, like the color blocking, there's additional like strokes in here. So I don't know if you've noticed that, but I did all these little strokes and together I think the image looks great. And I wish there was a way for me to pick up all these little details that I added. Um, you can kind of see it in the print that I scanned, but not as much as I would like for it to be visible. And I think this is one of my favorite plants that I drew at the beginning of the year. And then you saw me draw the hands as like a warm up. This is my stamp image that I created. So for the stamp, this is where this image comes from. And then I also use this image for my other credit card. And um, I think it looks really cute. And then the, the background is all white on the card. So the card is actually like white. And then you see this image, so it really pops. And uh, this reminds me of an image out of, um, out of Winnie the Pooh for some reason, I don't know why. And I think I may have mentioned that before. I don't, I never really watched Winnie the Pooh. I thought it was really boring. And even now I kind of think it's a little boring. No offense if you're a fan, but um, every time I look at this image, it just reminds me of that show. And then this is when I was working on ideas for the stationary theme. And more ideas. I did sketch out my mobile stationery cart before I drew this image. So this was my sketch. And then I decided, well, let's just go for it and let's draw it. I, I really like it. There are some things I would change, but I do like the fact that it's not perfect, that it's kind of wonky in its own way. I know like the wheel here is a little bit off and should be like the way that you see it, it should be facing this angle. So those are just some of the things I know I need to work on if I want my artwork to look more realistic, but I kind of am in between realism and um, I don't even know the word, pretend, uh, like cartoon-ish a little bit. So more sketching, here's my little bear that I did the artwork with the, uh, the sticker sheet with the bear and um, his stationery. And then I never got a chance to show you guys this, but I may still have some clips of this. Uh, initially when I was creating this, I actually filmed it, um, but I lost some of the footage and so I felt like it would be really incomplete and not the best video if it were its separate video but I will show you a piece of the process of when I was painting this in this video so you may even be watching it now um, but I really liked creating these and putting them into a sticker sheet that was really fun and I I want to do it again but I think I might switch it up to I 
I probably won't do it this year because I don't want to overplay it, but I think I want to do something that has to do with flowers, images that are in these type of like tickets. And then sketching out for the traveling theme, you may recognize this. And I was thinking about doing like a bunch of suitcases with the skylines of different cities. So I was sketching out London and then I was gonna do Tokyo, uh, but it never really came together <laughs> in time. And then I did this art piece that is a printable. Um, when I was doing this, I didn't realize that when I painted this side that it would transfer. So it looks a little bit dirty, but this was with gouache and with my new set of uh, acrylic gouache. And then I tried to do like a trailer, which didn't turn out as nice as I wanted it to. So um, that just remained a sketch. And then I started getting into the, um, yeah, into the animal like aqua theme. So you may recognize these. And this is with my new, the new paints at the time that were the homemade paints from Lua Watercolor. The only thing is that the paint seemed to run onto the other side of the page. I recently discovered when you're making your watercolor paints, if you can wipe off the paint with your finger or a paper towel of some sort, then it means you didn't um, really mold, or is it mold or mold the paints long enough? So you really need to increase your mixing time. And that's one of the things I'm discovering. Nothing that like was too important where I couldn't already scan it prior after like after I finished. I did this page first and then I did this page. You may not even be able to see what I'm seeing, but there's like, it's almost like when you have a pencil that's rubbing onto the other side of the page, that's what the paint is doing on this side. So there's like dark spots all over. There's also, dark spots all over this page too from this image which was also done with the handmade watercolors that I purchased. And then you may have seen these characters. I was going to do a whole page but then I was already doing the um, hand lettering challenge with my with different animals and so I didn't want to do it twice so I just kept it as is. I did like a little image here that you guys have for the July printables. Oh and then I did this. I really love this. It's still my uh, computer desktop image and even my laptop image for work. And then I anticipated that I should have added this. I forgot to add this for you guys. But um, yeah, this was like the beginning image of like the blanket on the sand painting for the July sticker. And so um, I thought this is what I was gonna go with, but I really like the one I actually did do later. And then my fish tanks. And this was done with gouache. There was a video on that. And then I, this is when I really started getting into like color theory and I'm still learning about color theory. But after I created this from a YouTube video on how to create this, I've like, my mind was blown and I've just learned so much since. So I really want to make this into a big sticker so I could put it on my wall. And let me know if you guys are interested in me adding this to Patreon. If you guys want a print of this or like a, a download of this because this is really good to look at. And I wanna create more. I mean, what I've learned is that these colors, you can change like 
the three main colors. So it doesn't have to be cadmium yellow light hue. It could just be um, a lemon yellow with a different type of red color and a different, different type of blue color to see what other colors you can make when you mix them together. So the, the orange may be a different hue of orange or just slightly, it's slightly different depending on what paints you use for your main, main primary colors. And I don't know, just by the artist explaining that color harmony between these colors and when you are painting the piece or you're putting anything together, it doesn't even have to be art, it could be furniture, it could be anything that has to do with like your home, maybe like what you're wearing. So like, there are certain colors that go really well together and make it easier on the eyes to look at. And then there's certain ways that you should put your, place your colors together. And there's just so much information on it. This really opened up my eyes when it comes to painting. And I feel like I'm a little bit more mindful when it comes to choosing my colors now. I want to make sure I can choose colors that go together and I felt like this kind of, this was my first practice at really trying to figure out what colors should work together. Even though I created this before I created this, but this was around the time when I was um, learning about color theory and yeah, I feel like I kind of was able to pull out some colors that make it, make these pop a little bit more. So then here is the books I drew and I never colored it in, you guys. I never painted it. Um, I may get back to it. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I feel like it's a little bit more difficult for me to paint it now because my lines were so dark. My tracing or my pencil lines are so dark. And so the final piece won't look as great as I would like it to. And then I was doing some more color combinations and this is a good way to show the hue scale and then the value scale. So different hues of color and then the value of light to dark. So what you're supposed to do is mix two colors. And so here I picked Thalo Turquoise and Rose of Ultramarine, and then you fade them with water to get a different value. And then you change the hue by mixing them together. So you may pull Thalo Turquoise first and then just a little bit of Rose Ultramarine and then make a swatch. And then you pull a little bit of Rose Ultramarine first and a tad bit of thalo turquoise and you make a swatch and then you mix some equal parts together to get their full mix and you can see how the colors change now the artist that i was um, learning this from suggested to do that with every color you have which i have not done yet but she had done it and she did it on a huge paper watercolor paper board and she keeps it up in her office or her studio and um, so she can reference it. And I think I was like, that's brilliant. So you could see how these colors mix. Well, to be honest, I never learned how to properly mix or to pull like colors to get different um, hues. And I thought you had to do equal parts of this color, equal parts of that color, but to slowly get from this color to this color, I didn't know the proper way to do that and I've learned so much since then and I have so much more control over my colors and it's just it's just amazing. I'm I'm just I'm just really excited about how well I've improved with my watercolor and how much I did not know. <laughs> um, and then this is a comparison between cobalt till blue and lemon yellow and I think these colors are so pretty together. Same with these and um, yeah. Oh, and then the last two pages. So this was me um, doing a tutorial with uh, Jenna Rainey. This was the watercolor tutorial she had and I was practicing it. It's definitely, I feel like I've improved even a lot from this to uh, 
what I'm doing now. Um, but I've learned a lot of different techniques when it comes to watercolor and how to get uh, those, like the fading and the bleeding look. There's a lot of mistakes in this, but overall, if you're looking from a distance, it looks pretty cool, right? Um, and then this is, I was trying to use the same technique here and paint this and I never really went back to it, but I was okay, I was okay with where I left it. Uh, but one of the things I've noticed is that my new watercolor book, sketchbook, is has 100% cotton paper. And I thought I put in, okay, for some part, of this notebook, I did have like the information with the all the like statistical information on this, like what's the paper count and all that, um, but I don't have it anymore. So you'd have to look it up online, but I can tell a huge difference between this paper and 100% cotton. And it's mind blowing at how much paper really changes your images and your artwork. So with that said, let me share a little bit more about my other new sketchbook. So the notebook I'm using now is this one, and this is the Etcher sketchbook. It is the A5 size, and so like A5 vertical, but it opens up horizontal. and. Um, for size reference, you can see here how much smaller it is, but it's still a pretty good, good size. Let me show it next to like the B6, Jibun B6. So this one has 100% cotton paper and I was looking on YouTube for some of the best sketchbooks that are can be hardbound or soft cover but have really good quality paper and um, I've landed on this and I think I was watching watercolor misfits or something and she did like a whole video on comparing like five or six different sketchbooks it's pretty insane but she went across this and this is one of the best ones that she had and she also said it was actually at a more reasonable price than it was uh, when they first started on Amazon because I think a lot of them you were buying, you had to buy at least the three book pack and the price was over $100, although I'm pretty sure it comes out to a better deal. But if you weren't sure about the notebook, then now you can just buy one. So it has an elastic band and unlike some elastic bands, this one is super soft. And then it is like a textured, uh, it feels like linen cover. And um, at first I thought it looked really nice. It was really nice and white and clean, but since I've been using it, it has gotten very dirty. <laughs> You can kind of see some dirty marks up there and around here. So I'm just keeping this close by because I wanted to show some comparisons of like some of the artwork I've done in here versus what I was doing probably six months ago. So every page you can watercolor on and it does come with a bookmark which I don't really use and it does have a pocket. So crazy me, I wanted to do some, I wanted to do like a practice image and I was going to include this in the July printables, but then I didn't like it. <laughs> so let me zoom in just a little bit. So I did this and I could see how the color moves on this paper. So nice. And you don't get, it's easy to kind of clean up some mistakes. So I did make like a little bit of a mistake outside this line here and it's kind of hard to tell. Um, the colors just blend so beautifully on this paper. It does, I forgot to mention, it does have a pocket. And 
and I was just doing some more random sketches and see here that little mark here is from the watercolor here. So I don't know why I just ended up starting from the back of the book and I guess that's the way I'm gonna work work from the back forward. I feel like there's less less stress from working from the back of the book than the front. I don't know why. But um, just some practice watercolor. So these you may recognize some of the images on my recent watercolor uh, flowers sticker sheet in the shop. And this is the uh, handmade paints that I bought on Instagram or off of Instagram. And this is watercolor paints that are the professional paints. And if you want to look at this and compare it to what I was doing <laughs> with, I, I, okay, what I was doing with this leaf, it's like, what is that? That looks terrible. It's like, what is that? <laughs> So anyway, I feel like I've improved quite a lot. And these you've seen already. I really love this one and how that one turned out. And it just keeps going. So far the book is holding up really well. The paints are really vibrant. This is an image I haven't finished coloring in. I keep saying coloring in, I mean painting in. And then my other watercolor florals. I really like this one. And then my most recent floral, I actually did this yesterday, which would be Tuesday. And um, that's it so far. So definitely improving and I'm definitely finding a huge difference in the, the, like the paper. And it's so much easier to work with when it comes to blending your colors. You don't get so many weird hard lines and weird color shifts unless you want it to be that way. Same here, even with like some of my leaves. So this paper is great, but it could be better, is all I'm saying. Um, but I'm happy I was able to finish, and I hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. I'd love to interact with you guys and to hear your thoughts, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.